Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for not letting my son into my house, after he tried to sell it to pay for his mom's surgery? My husband, deceased, and I adopted our son since he was two. We gave him a beautiful name, and moved into a new house with spacious backyard. We were happy to have him in our lives and we were open with him about his past. At four, we told him that he was adopted. We took care of everything, but at 16, he started behaving strangely. We thought he was just being a teenager. But he treated me and his father poorly, blaming us for taking him from his real mother. He said that all the time. He distanced himself from me and stopped calling me mom. That broke my heart although it's been years. He also changed his name, saying he wanted to have a say, and that I had no right to give him his old name. Just because he was adopted. He'd argue with us for no reason, telling us we had no business in knowing anything about him, because he isn't our son. I had no idea why he acted like that, we were always there for him. We paid for his college, and he left at 19 saying he wanted to go to his real family, and cut contact. My husband and I tried to text and call. His dad passed away last year. He didn't even visit me when I was dealing with grief, and this was my first Christmas without my husband. I tried to reach out, but was at a loss since he wouldn't talk, text, or see me. My family told me to let him go for now, that he'll come around eventually, but my heart was crying just to speak with him, or see him. He met some of his birth family, but had no connection to them. He couldn't develop a relationship with his aunts or uncles because of how they treated his mother. He never got invited to cookouts or parties, so he decided to stick with his biological mom who's dealing with a medical condition. He visited me a month ago and told me all of that. He talked about his mother's illness, and asked me to help. I was taken aback, after he told me he came back because he wanted to, and then suggested that I sell my house to help pay for his mother's surgery. Suggested that I live in an apartment instead. I was shocked and I told him no. This is not my problem and this house is all I have left. He argued with me and said hurtful things, like how I'm refusing to help out of spite, and that I wanted his mom out of the picture. He said that I can't keep him away from his mother. I said, I'm not keeping him away, but he was out of line to tell me to sell my house and help him out. I eventually kicked him out, after he hid documents that belonged to the house to try and get me to sell it. I haven't heard from him. Until last week, my family contacted me saying my son wants to see me, but I refuse to let him into my house. I argued with my family when they berated me for treating him like that. I explained what happened, and they said that I should consider helping him if I want a relationship with him, since he came back. I refused to help, especially after how he acted. But he's now talking to my family making it seem it was my fault. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. If your family feels so bad for him and his mom, they can sell their homes and help her. How do we know the son's story is even real? Maybe the story about his mom is all BS. Clearly not the a-hole. This part bothers me. I eventually kicked him out, after he hid documents that belonged to the house to try and get me to sell it. Where is the deed to your property? Check with your county property records to be sure that there has not been some sort of title hanky-panky. One of my cousins had her house sold out from under her by her son. Talk to a lawyer about this ASAP. They said that I should consider helping him if I want a relationship with him since he came back. They can help him if they feel that close to someone who abandoned the parents who raised him. Yes. Because everyone outside OP's family knows that he's only back to get the money, and two seconds after it's in his hot little hands, he's gone. Not the a-hole. He changed his name and swore you off. Now he demands you to help him after all the ungratefulness? Please do be careful. Desperate people can do some crazy things. I'm not trying to keep him from his mother and I don't know why he keeps saying that. But I told him I'm not responsible for this problem, so he can't expect me to sell my house and help him out. He spent time with his biological family, he saw how they treated him so I know they won't help, but that's not my problem. What he did hurt me a lot. I can't even be open and talk to him about how I feel. He's changed and I can see it. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for reporting my therapist after she disclosed information to my stepmom? I, 20 female lost my mom in 2018 in a car accident. It was sudden it was devastating and I had no one to turn to for support. My dad married my stepmom a year later and I currently live with them preparing for medical school. I have to say, I'm not that excited to start, because I have a lot of unresolved grief and needed to talk. My stepmom has been trying to insert herself as a replacement for my mom, and it's very obvious. 
She's controlling and gets involved in every single aspect of my life that makes me uncomfortable. I told my dad that I'll be seeing a therapist, and my stepmom said she'd take care of it. I have been in therapy for two months now. However lately, I noticed my stepmom wanting to talk to me about things that I regularly bring up in therapy to my therapist. She'd bluntly ask questions about things I said in therapy. She at some point offered me money to talk to her. I stopped talking to her. But she started bringing up my mom during dinner. It's not easy to talk about my mom because it's very stressful and causes me to get emotional. When I asked how she knew, she admitted that the therapist told her. I was shocked. She went on about why I shouldn't hate her and respect her more and get rid of the negativity, and just accept and try to adapt to this new normal. I had no response, but I was mad I yelled at her, and told her she had no right to police my words and get involved in my personal manners. My dad said I shouldn't yell, because my stepmom was just worried about me and wanted to make sure I was making progress in therapy. I left the kitchen. I decided to stop seeing my therapist, and the next day, I told her about what my stepmom said and told her that I'll be reporting her for breaking confidentiality. My stepmom threw a fit and my dad told me to back down, and that I was free to stop going, but not cause issues and mess with people's careers and act out like that. I refused to listen to him and he's still telling me to stop it. He ignores how upset I am. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Report her and get as far away from these people as you can. You should be able to talk to your therapist without worrying find one who doesn't know her at all. I'm so sorry. Exactly, not the a-hole. You need to report her in case she is doing this to other people. She broke conduct and confidentiality. If she didn't want to get in trouble, she shouldn't have blabbed to your step monster in the first place. I would pretty much guarantee she is doing this to other people. Confidentiality is one of the most important cornerstones of therapy. To have that broken in this way, could be severely damaging. Obviously not the a-hole. Also, just report her without telling your dad and stepmom. It's not their business. At this point, I'm pretty sure the therapist will tell them. Not the a-hole. I studied psychology for six years, including three years looking at psychological therapies. They drill into us the importance of privacy and confidentiality. By breaking confidentiality, she put her own career on the line, and to be frank, you owe it yourself and her other patients to report her for that. She knows the rights and wrongs of being a therapist, and she made the wrong choice and should suffer the consequences. Otherwise, she'll continue to do this and get away with it. Your stepmom was way out of line and should have kept her nose out. If she wants your trust, she's doing a really rubbish job of earning that. If she wants a healthy relationship with you, she needs to go about it in an ethical way, and she also needs to understand that these things can't be forced. Your dad is also in the wrong for not seeing just how messed up your therapist and stepmom acted in this situation, and he's really let you down for that. The next story is titled. Am I the a-hole for not allowing my sister to move in with me? So I, 28 mil, am a pro athlete. For privacy reasons, I don't want to say which sport or which team, but I am decently successful, and own my own home. My current house is my dream house. It has a single floor, so it's not too big, but it has three rooms and a living and dining room. I have one room as my bedroom, I had the second room converted into a home gym, and I use the third room as a super good gaming room. Each of my specialized rooms are perfect for their purposes. My game room has a PC with a great monitor, a PS4, waiting on the PS5 upgrade, with a high quality TV. My gym has great equipment and is perfect for the off season. I also have a decent sized yard and two dogs with plans for a third. I have a decent sized friend group whom I invite over frequently, and often have sleepovers with. This typically isn't planned, we don't drink, but we just talk a lot, and sometimes watch movies and end up falling asleep. Recently, my sister got into a college nearer where I live. When she told me the news, she told me how great it was that we're going to live together again. I told her I had no space, but she told me we could convert our gym into a bedroom for her, complete with a desk. This irked me because I love living alone. I like being able to get up and leave whenever I want. I like being able to watch whatever I want on the TV without judgment or scrutiny. I like not having to consider other people. Now, there are a number of examples I could give, where my sister is just a plain bad roommate. She doesn't exactly take care of other people's things when she borrows them, and she feels entitled to them if they're in the same house as her. She also has a habit of inviting people over without permission and forethought which I obviously dislike. 
She is also a gamer, and would like to play games on my console and PC. I obviously do not want her to do that, because knowing her, she'd probably break it, or she'd grow so attached to it she thinks it's really her property at that point. There are a hundred other things which she does which I don't like, but you get the point. Now, I told my sister all of this, and she started off on me. She started yelling about how because I play for a living, I should help out people who actually have to work for money. She told me that I need to care for my family. My parents are staying out of it, and saying that we're both adults and can figure this out for ourselves. They say if I don't let sis live with me, they'll pay for on-campus lodging, but she'd have to have a roommate, which she doesn't want. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. I love how she doesn't want to live with a roommate, but it is fine to force you to have one. LOL. I have the feeling she'd be the type to say OP isn't my roommate, he's my brother, silly. Not the a-hole. She doesn't want a roommate, clearly hasn't spotted that she would have one if she moved in with you, which may mean she is assuming she can live as she likes, because family, plus there is the entitlement implied, by telling you how to rearrange your living space for her. Stand your ground, just maybe treat her with, clearly defined, visits and stayovers when she's local. The roommate at school would be sharing an actual bedroom, not a house though. Still not the a-hole, but that is probably the distinction she is making. Not the a-hole, your house, your rules. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for selling the family home that's been in my late husband's family since 1908? My late husband inherited the family property that's been his family since 1908, when it was built. It's a gorgeous estate with 7 bedrooms and 9 bathrooms, tennis court, in-ground pool, 3 acres of land, horse stables. We've lived in it since my boys were younger, but they are 19, 17, 15, and 13 now. We don't use half the space or amenities anymore. I spend more on upkeep for things we don't use than I do for upkeep on the things we do use. Anyway, when my husband inherited the house, the rest of the family hated us. They accused us of convincing his mom to change the will, but in reality, she changed the will because none of the other kids gave a damn about her. She would have died holding the hand of her living caregiver if we weren't there, her other kids wouldn't and didn't show up until a few days after she passed, despite living two towns over and being told it was their last chance to see her alive. They got over it. We were still the black sheeps, but they at least faked being nice so the kids could play. So then, my husband dies four years after his mom. After he died. His family cut contact with me and my boys completely. They refused to see my sons if I was going to be around. I don't know why. They blamed me for not letting them see the boys, because I wouldn't leave my own house to let them come over, or drop them off without speaking to someone first. Cut to now, my boys are starting to leave the nest. This house is huge, my joints hurt too much to walk to the other side sometimes. There will be times where a room goes untouched for months at a time. Living in this house was an honor and a blessing, but we truly don't need it anymore. So, like most people who downsize in their later years, I'm looking to sell it. I reached out to let my husband's family know, so they can visit one more time and get any furniture, antiques, or belongings that they didn't get when mother-in-law passed. Boy are they pissed. I also told them they could get the first dibs on buying it before we put it on the market. They were completely insulted, that I would expect them to buy the house. A family friend, childhood friend of my husband's, so he's friendly to all sides, said I'm not wrong for selling, but it ain't right to make them buy their mother's house. I get that, but I feel like this is my son's house, not the family house or my house anymore. The money I make off of the sale, will go toward a fund for them to use to buy their own houses one day. Not the a-hole. The house is yours. You are being exceedingly generous in your offer to let them have sentimental items out of it, and offering to let them buy it before selling it elsewhere. Based on their behavior in the past, you owe them nothing. Seriously. So you're what, just supposed to move out and let them have it and buy whatever you can afford with however much you have in the bank? That would be a major favor even if you liked each other, but you basically only, barely, tolerated each other for the sake of the children. That friend is an idiot, and what you're doing is totally fine. Not the a-hole. If your husband's mother wanted it to remain in the family forever, she would have specified that in the will. Can't be done, we have a rule against perpetuities. Not the a-hole, sell the house. You owe your husband's family nothing. Even what you are offering is overly generous. Sell it for the top dollar you can get for it, 
and find a place suitable for you. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.